I have not forgotten. We appreciate you folks joining in today on this Friday at noon. We thank God for you. Appreciate you listening. Thank God for the people up in Relaford County. We're listening this the last time we was on. Want today to talk to you a little bit about right of the past, the present, and the future. As you may know today, we have lived through many years, and probably you also have too, and I thank God that uh, you all that stayed out there will take it under consideration that the past is gone for what we could have been doing more for Jesus than we have done in the past. And God expects you and I to save now to always remember the past is gone, the present is now, and the future's coming up. So I'd like to speak to you a little bit about the past days, the present, and the future. Now I'd like for you to turn your Bible today, if you have it, to John chapter 14. We have one verse we'd like to read to you. And Jesus said this, And if I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, and there where I am, there you may be also. A promise. There's hope in Christ. Christ is the way. He is the truth. He died at Golgotha, rose the third morning for your past, present sins, and save you, you and I that save a day by his marvelous grace. And I know maybe some of you listening today maybe ain't saved, but you've had a great opportunity ever how old, above, of course, the age of accountability here that you've passed. Maybe some of you are listening, you're not saved. Today is the day of salvation. Jesus said today is the day of salvation. So don't let it slip on and slip on and keep on and keep on putting it off because what's going to happen, it's going to leave you and you'll never be saved. Now God said in Genesis, he said, for my spirit won't always strive with men. But we want to remember to say, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he said, now Jesus said, if I go away on his last time on planet earth, on the Sea of Galilee, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Now, right away, Jesus is gone to heaven to prepare you and I a place to live where there is no sin. See, we live in a world that's full of sin. Sin is raging on every part of the nation, every part of the country, every county, everywhere you turn around and look, you're going to see sin happening right before your eyes. Hey, hey, I'm telling you, you need to live for Jesus while you got the golden opportunity. And if you don't, it's going to be too sad. Now, see, he's, he's went ahead and prepared a place for us. And he is coming again, as he said. Now, there's two men in the Bible, you might notice, here in the book of St. Luke, that we want to look at a little bit. And in that scripture there, he was a man, he was a rich man. Now, he definitely had a man laid at his gate full of sores, and his name was Lazarus. And he wasn't a rich man, but he was a man that testified about the rich man's soul salvation, and he let them past days go by, and he never did repent of his sins. Now, what's going to happen to you and I today, and you out there listening, you're going to let it just keep on and keep on passing by and not trust in him. And it'll slip right away from you. And you'll never have another golden opportunity to ever, ever be saved in this life. There ain't going to be no second change. It's now or never. And the Bible said there in Luke 16, uh, chapter 16, verse 22, And it came to pass that the beggar, he died, and were carried by the angels unto the bosom of Abraham. And the rich man also died, and he was buried. So these two people, one went to hell, and the other went directly to Abraham's bosom at that particular time. is located in the heart of the earth, but that's been changed since Jesus died on the cross, arose, 
and took paradise to the third heaven with him as he resurrected them up that day. But now the rich man, he has missed his great opportunity such as some of you and a whole lot of you out there that you're going to miss if you don't get right with Jesus. Now, uh, it's, God is definitely prepared and preparing a place for you. And I'm going to tell you about a place. And the place is, it's located in the 21st chapter of the book of the Revelations. And this man, John, he said these words, 20, chapter number 21 and verse 1, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there were no more sea. Hey, hey. Now listen, John said, I saw these things coming to pass. Now the present's gone, and uh, right now we're living in the future, right now in the present, then the future now, I'm talking to you a little bit about the future and what's going to be in the future to, for you and I to save a day. There's a whole lot of stuff you and I, we don't really deserve. But now, think about a place that the rich man, he could have been. Here on earth, he lived in grand glamour and enjoyed the wealth of the world. And then it soon come to an end for him. But Lazarus, he's enjoying a place called heaven a place that we recognize in the book of the 21st chapter of the Revelations that God said there now in chapter number uh, 21, verse number 4, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Now, we're, that's a place that there'll be no crying. There'll be no sorrow in heaven. There are plenty of crying going on here. There's plenty of sorrow going on here in America and all worldwide. And it don't have to be, but it is all because of sin. That's the only the reason it's going on. It's because of sin that is happening to people around and about. A place where God is building a four-square city, 1,500 miles wide streets, golden streets to walk upon. But it ain't so much that the goal interests me, but it's what interests me a lot and a whole lot more than anything else is get to see Jesus, get to spend eternity with him where there's not any sin at all. Here every once in a while you and I just say we'll have some old foolish thoughts will come to our mind and that's why Paul said we need to pray constantly, pray daily and that's something we try to do every day of our life. Be riding down the road and the first thing you know be some old foolish hot thought will hit your mind, but that won't be in heaven now. That's right here in the present, but that'll never be in, in the future. See, God's getting things cleared up for the future, and we're living right here in the present, and you can't do nothing about the past. The past tense is gone, gone. The yesterdays are gone forever and forever. That shall never be again. But all the wrong that you have done and had not asked God to forgive you of them sins today, God, He will forgive you. He'll clarify you out and take care of them sins and thank God put them under the blood of the Lamb. Isn't that good? It's good to know that. I thank God I'm glad today I'm saved, saved by the marvelous grace of Jesus. And I want you to know, and God shall wipe away all tears now from their eyes. And then there shall be no more death. No, no, no. Now, you know, in this world, we have to visit the funeral home every once in a while. Every once in a while, we'll have a loved one in our family a pass, and that brings sorrow. That brings disappointment. And matter of fact, it brings you down really weak in the body. It has you kind of to the place that you just wonder, well, well, why does these things have to happen? But God said it's once appointed unto man to die, and after that the judgment. But thank God there'll be no death now in heaven. There'll be no funeral homes to go to. Oh, hallelujah. It'll be nothing but joy. Now you think about that. Joy, splendor, peace for the ancient eternal ages. I don't know how long eternity is. Nobody has a count on it. Eternity is always to always to never be not. It'll always be. And there's a lot of folks today think when you die, you just die. And you just go back to the dust of the earth. And that's the end. Well, I'll have you to know today 
that God created man in the he created he him in the image of God a soul was created but God cannot and will not never die now the rich man today is in hell screaming he's wishing he could get out of there he's going to be in a, a place at the final judgment in the eternal hell and there'll be gnashing of teeth there'll be all kind of different things of pests in him by the ancient ages forever and evermore. You don't want to go to that place, but if you're not saved and you die as a lost lady, a young man, young girl, that's exactly where you're going to wind up in hell forever. And I'll tell you today, if you let sensational grace, God's grace, His merit gift, all you have to do is just call upon the name of Jesus. Thou said, if thou shalt believe upon the name of Jesus Christ, Thou shall be saved. God cannot, God will not lie. Think about a city, a place. There'll be no death. There'll be no sorrow. And amen. There'll be no sickness. Now in this world we have a lot, lot of different diseases are coming and are going. Cancer, have the coronavirus. We have polio. And all of these situated items has come and went in this world and still in this world, as some of them still are going on, but when you get to heaven, it'll say goodbye to all of these things God's talking about here in the 21st chapter of the Revelations and verse number four. I want you to know God cannot, God will not lie. God is the truth. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. He cannot lie. Satan's a liar. I want you to know today Satan, he's deceived you out there, many, many, hundreds and thousands probably of you. Satan is deceiving you by saying unto you, wait till tomorrow. I'll go to church when I get to feeling better. I'll go hear that other preacher. I don't like the other. Well, what about God's Word? What are you going to do with it? You're going to give an account. That's exactly what you're going to do whether you want to or you want to or not. You will definitely give an account how you behave yourself, how you act with the Word of God. And God expects, especially you and I to say, it, He expects something out of you. Amen. And I tell you, I gave a lot of my years for the Lord in camp meeting, radio work, and I'm glad. I have not felt sorry for myself over doing it. I've always been glad I went ahead and try and keep on keeping on for Jesus. That's what counts. And you know what's going to happen? One of these days, whenever we die, we'll go to a place called heaven, and I'll say goodbye to all behind me and all the sin and all the wrong thoughts this old natural body produces, and it ain't God's fault it does. I want you to know God cannot, God cannot sin. God has no part in sin. God never has sin, and God never will sin. God is perfect, and I'm serving a perfect Lord. I'm worshiping a perfect Savior. Worship Him and serve Him. That's exactly what God expects out of you. Now listen to me today and listen good. Yesterday's gone, you right now in the present, and the future's coming up whether you like it or you don't like it. It's coming up. Hey, hey, the old calendar on the wall, it changes numbers every day from 21 today. Say, for instance, tomorrow be the 22nd, and them calendar dates are counting off, and the old clock on the wall is still ticking down the time. The years are passing. You're getting older, growing older, and letting the good days and the good years slip by you and doing nothing for Jesus. Then when you, if you're saved and you get to heaven, what are you going to be rewarded for? Nothing, nothing. If you don't have a bank account, put money in the bank. Thank God you ain't got no money in the bank. But if you make a make an account, put money in the bank, go down, test, check it out now and then. Well, you got a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, or three, you got money, money, money. But if you don't do something for Jesus, don't you expect him to reward you when you get to heaven, when we're getting our reward? Are you the saved, washed in the blood in God's will, doing God's will, living for Jesus, backing up your local assembly, supporting your church, paying your tithes and offerings? I want you to know you'll be rewarded. Now that is in the future, amen. Hey, hey, I want you to know the day God is really real. God cannot lie. Now listen, and the Bible said there in that verse, there'll be no sickness, there'll be no crying, and there'll be no sorrow. Amen. And he said this, 
And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, preparing as a bride adorned. Hallelujah to that word. Hallelujah. What John saw is really, he said it's really real. And write it down, John. Write it down. Put it in words where people can read it. Where the Holy Spirit, especially you that's saved, can understand. But if you're not saved and washed in the blood, you cannot spiritually understand God's holy word. There's not any way it'll ever happen to you. A lost man or woman will take it for granted, never t go with it. They'll just leave it lay in there. Let dust accumulate on your Bible when you ought to be rubbing the dust off and you ought to open it up once in a while. And every day, as a matter of fact, every day you ought to open it up and read some if it ain't but a verse or two. Every day that I start off, every morning, 4.35, 30 or whatever, I always have all the prayer at my altar. Hey, hey, a preacher ain't got an altar prayer. Thank God he ought to give up his license. Hey, you hear what I'm saying? And you ought to be ashamed of yourself if you don't have an altar prayer. Got your youngs around you and once in a while praying with them, having trust in God and God will save them. And I'll tell you what, reading the Bible and reading some verses every day, Thank God it'll help you through the day. It'll help you stay spiritual minded. Matter of fact, it'll help you want to win someone to Jesus. It'll help you testify out publicly as you go out into the world on your job. Every once in a while, God will make a way for you to testify to your people you work around or wherever and however, whatever you may do. But think about, now the rich man is in torment. Lazarus enjoying heaven. He's screaming and hollering in hell. Millions and multitudes are there now. And they're going to be, a lot of you be there. A lot of you probably hearing our voice today. Amen. Yeah, some of you, if you don't get saved, then you wake up in hell. You say, well, I wish I'd have listened. That preacher was preaching about heaven and about hell and about the past, the present, and the future. I'm doing right now in the present. Now's my time to do what I can do and I need to do and all I want to keep on keeping on doing for him and keep on testifying openly and publicly, openly and publicly for my Savior because thank God he went to Calvary. He died for my sins. He not only my sins, he died for me to be saved and washed in his blood that I'll have a home in heaven one of these days. And I tell you what, one of these days it's coming up that when we can cross over to another country. And it's really real in this body. It's hard to comprehend it, but if you just stay in God's will, living for Jesus, the past is gone, never will be again. Right now in the present, from here on out, do something for the Lord. If you're not saved, I trust you will. Trust Jesus and be washed in the blood. And you can go to a city where John said, no sickness, no crying, no sorrow. And God said, I'll wipe away your tears and they'll be wiped away forever and for all eternity. That's going to really, really be happening to we that's redeemed by the blood. But if you're not redeemed by the blood of Christ, you'll be meeting the, probably the rich man in hell and all the Hitlers and all the people that denied Christ dying on Calvary and all the people that said, I have better things to do than to live for Jesus. Oh, how could you be so deceived? Don't let Satan help you get in hell. That's all he cares about. He don't care nothing about you going to heaven. He wants you to go to hell. You see, he's got power to deceive you and be deceived. Don't let him continue leading you the way you may be going if you're not saved. You're not living for him. You need to change your soul and get right with God and he'll get, you'll be all right. I'm washed in the blood, His crimson flood, I have not forgotten. I have not forgotten.
On Friday and Saturday, June the 3rd and 4th, 2022, you're invited to attend the inaugural Higher Ground Youth Jubilee. This will be the first time we've ever had this meeting and you're gonna to wanna to come and bring your young people and let them be encouraged to take their relationship with Christ to higher grounds. Brother Will Cox and Brother Adam Evans invite you to come out and be a part of this fantastic new meeting. On Friday night, Evangelist Jeffrey Phillips will be preaching alongside with our moderator, Brother Will Cox, and you're going to want to come out and be encouraged by this night. Miss Anna Workman will be providing the music, and you're going to want to come and support her and hear her sing the songs of Christ. We'll also have a quartet from our church that will be singing as well. And then on Saturday morning at 10 a.m., our pastor, Dr. Chris Emery, will be sharing the pulpit with evangelist John Morgan from Hendersonville, North Carolina. You're going to want to come and hear these two men of God thunder the Word of God together and encourage our young people. We're glad to have Greater Purpose singing with us on Saturday as well. So come on out and be a part of this fantastic morning service. Immediately after the service, we're going to have a barbecue lunch, and you're going to want to enjoy that together. And as soon as the lunch is over, we're going to meet back one final time where our young preachers will have the opportunity to preach 15 minutes apiece. So come on out, be encouraged, and challenge your young people to go to higher grounds with the Lord Jesus Christ. Higher Ground Youth Jubilee is a ministry of the Morris Memorial Baptist Church in Kayser, North Carolina, where Dr. Chris Emery serves as the pastor. You can contact us by reaching us at 770-876-5438. You can visit us online at morrismemorialkayser.com. And please plan to come and be with us in person, 137 Delaware Drive, Shelby, North Carolina. It is a Faustin area, but it's a Shelby address. So if you put Shelby in the GPS, you'll find it. And we're at the end of the road and a brand new painted building. And you're going to want to come out and be a part of this meeting. We're looking forward to it. The Higher Ground Youth Jubilee, June 3rd and 4th. Come out and be with us. And let's go to higher grounds together.